White. Today we will talk about hypothesis testing. So we are going to look at the principles of hypothesis testing. The first thing we need to remember that I will be using the p-value method and I will reject the h null if the p-value that my calculator calculates is less than or equal to alpha where alpha is the significance level. It can be, for example, a number like 0.05. We will fail to reject H null, on the other hand, if our p-value is greater than alpha. So when I plug in numbers to my calculator, I will compare p-values to alphas once I establish my H null and H1. The traditional method is given in detail in your notes and your book. And we are going to bypass that if you want to do it by hand with the traditional method. You, you are welcome to do it, but I will just go over the p-value method with your TI-84 or 83. Let's go to the next slide. Now, when I do the hypothesis testing for proportions, if I were to do this using the traditional method, I would have calculated the test statistic for the proportions, which is given by this formula. Um, I'm just showing this so that you can actually get this together in your heads, comparing this z to the p-value method. But the p's here are not, are ha have nothing to do with the p-values that I'm going to be comparing. These are the proportions. This is the, your point estimate for p, and this is your population proportion p. Now let's go to an example. I will just read that one for you because it's kind of a crowded slide. Now we have an article distributed by Associated Press and this is from a nationwide survey. There are 880 randomly selected drivers and they found out that 56% admitted that they run red lights. Test the claim that the majority of all Americans run red lights. The first thing you start with is to check whether or not you can use all these formulas and you do that by calculating NP. I went and asked 880 people and we calculate 880 times 0.5 which is the probability and then you, you're, you're trying to figure out whether or not that is uh, bigger or less than 5. So one thing that you need to understand that if this is correct, I can go and set up my claim and my hypothesis, which is given in here. H null, which is my null hypothesis, P equals 0.5, 50%. And H1, P is greater than 0.5. And this is what we set as a claim because it says the majority of all Americans round red lights. That means more than 50%. Now, if I were to do this by hand with the traditional method, I would have calculated the Z, which turns out to be 3.56. And then I would have gotten the Z critical based on the, um, the um, alpha that I pick. And then I would, I would compare the Z critical to Z and figure out whether or not I am in the critical zone. If you do this, if you look at it, the, you are going to reject your hypothesis if you end up in this zone, and you are going to fail to reject the hypothesis if you end up in this zone. So, now I need to find out, I don't remember if I got this in, in here in, in my critical, I think I took 0.995%. Um, uh, 0.95 and 95 percent and we are going to try to do that using our calculator. So what I'm going to have to uh, enter is the sample data 880 and my proportion. Now one thing you might want to do is I need to, I know that I need to enter when I entered in my calculator the x value instead of the p value. So I have to go and calculate that x so that I can do my calculations with my calculator. So I'm going to go and find that value, 0 0.56 times 880. Now let's go to the calculator and calculate the x value. 
Now, to calculate the x value, I have to take 0.56 and calculate the product of 0.56 and 880. I get 492.8. I have to roll to this to um, the, the nearest integer. So I'm going to enter 493 when the calculator asks me to do that. So to do this entire problem using the TI-84, what I need to do is I need to go to STAT. I need to go to test, and I have to pick one prop Z test. And to do that, I just hit enter. And here, oh, I, I went and picked the one prop Z test. Okay, let me clear that. I thought I picked the right one. So let's try it again. I pick stat, test, and I will make sure that I'm getting this one, one prop Z test. And this time I'm going to enter the P. This is the one P null in your null hypothesis. So that's going to be 0.5. Then you are going to enter the number of successes and that is going to be, uh, what did we calculate? 0 0.56 times 880. Um, let me get out of here and calculate that. Oh, 493. So let me write this down. 493. So I need to enter 0 .9, uh, 493 for my uh, x value. So let's go do that. I do one prop Z test. So 0 0.5. So I'm going to enter 493 here. And I'm going to get the 880, which is my n. And this one is going to be picked based on H null. H null says P is greater than 0.5. So I have to go pick the greater than button. And to pick that, you have to push enter. And then you are going to go calculate. Now, if you look at it, I look at it and I get a P of 1.76 10 to the negative 4. Now that one is a very small value. So if we are talking about an alpha of 0.05, that's going to be way smaller than any alpha, 0 0.05, 0 0.01. So what do you do? You, are, you know that you are in the critical zone. So let's go back to the paper. So 0 0.000176 tells me it's in the critical zone. And remember the principles. When you're in the critical zone, you reject H null. So that means you are going to reject H null. And that means your claim was supported. So let's go to the next step. I'm going to do the hypothesis testing for a mean now. Uh, for that one, your test statistic is going to have the z value of x hat minus mu of x hat divided by sigma divided by radical n. That is your test statistic. But we are not going to do that that way. If you want to do it by hand, you can see that. So I'm going to go straight to an example. The example is we are looking at 106 body temperatures, and that has a mean of 98.2 Fahrenheit. Assume, we are going to assume that the sample is a simple random sample and the population standard deviation is known to be 0.62. And we are going to use 0.05 significance level to test the common belief that the mean body temperature of healthy adults is equal to 98.6. So you set your claim as mu equals 98.6. In H1, mu is not equal to 98.6. If you were to do this problem by hand, you would have just set the z, plug in the numbers, and get negative 6.64. And z critical is obtained from the, from the tables. And if you look at the normal definition, since this is a two-tailed hypothesis testing because of the equal sign, you have to get the negative and the positive critical things. And then you have to look, where did I end up with negative 6 inside that, inside or outside the critical range? I am about here. That means I am in the critical range. I need to reject H null. 
let's say I want to do this, the same problem, using the p-value method, using my calculator. So let's go to the calculator. I'm going to clear everything. We are going to go and do the stat. And we are going to go to tests. And this time, we are going to pick the z-test. When you pick that, you, are, you have an option of entering either data or statistics. In this case, I will enter the statistics. So pick Enter. At this point, you are supposed to get the enter the mu. And the mu, in this case, a mean of 98.2. So I enter 98.2. And sigma is known, and it is given 0.62. Um, oh, sorry. You have to go back and you have to enter your population mu in here. And in this case, I just read, misread it. The, the uh, population mean is 98.6. So you need to enter that in there, 98.6. And here you have to enter your population mean, which happens to be 98.2. Now, how many ends we are talking about? It says a sample of 106, so you have to enter 106. And now you pick this, this, or that. Since your H1 is not equal, I have to pick that one. I do push enter to pick it. Then I push calculate. And as you see, you actually get the Z value from here as well if you want to compare this to your tables. But what's important is the p-value, which is 3, 10 to the negative 11. And it's extremely small when you compare this to, to your alpha. You know that you will end up in the critical zone. Therefore, you need to reject H now. Now, I'm going to do one more example. Now, what happens when you want to do, let's go back to the paper. And I will do hypothesis testing for a mean when sigma is not known. In the previous example, I had the sigma in my hands, but in this case, I don't. So when you do that, you have to use the t statistics instead of z. And if you were to do these calculations by hand, you would have used this formula. The test statistic for mean is going to be t. Now, let's go to an example. Let's assume, I will read you the example, it's a little bit of a small print. A pre-med student in a statistics class is required to do a class project. She plans to collect her own sample data to test the claim that the mean body temperature is less than 98.6. So at this point, you can actually try to set up your H null and H1. Mu is less than 98.6, that's the claim. She's testing that. After carefully planning a procedure for obtaining a simple sample random, a simple random sample of 12 healthy adults, they just gave me the N, she measures their body temperatures and obtains, obtains the results. So N equals 12, and she measures the temperature, this has to be X hat, 98.39, and her sample standard deviation, not the population starting standard deviation, is 0.535. Now what we need to do is we need to use 0.05 significance level to test the claim that these body temperatures come from a population with a mean that's less than 98.6. So if you were to do this by hand, you would have used the T and compared this to your uh, table value. Now let's use the p-value method. So let's go to the calculator. I will pick the stat. I will go and get the tests, and in, under the tests, instead of picking the Z test, I will pick the T test. When you do that, you want to pick the statistics, and you have to enter what is in your hypothesis, which is 98.6, and now you're going to enter your sample mean, which happens to be 98.39, 98. 
Now you're going to enter your sample standard deviation that happens to be 0.535. And you have to enter how many n, how many samples, n equals 12. Now you have to pick this line based on your H1, and H1 says mu less than 98.6, so you have to push the less than button and go to calculate. That will actually give you your T, which is the same as the one that I did, um, I did find by hand, T of negative 1.4. Now, this is the one that I want to look at. P is 0.1. That means 0.1 is greater than 0.05. We are outside the critical zone. So what do you need to do? We fail to reject the H now in this case. So this concludes the portion of our presentation about hypothesis testing. We did cover the proportion, the doing hypothesis testing for the mean, knowing the population standard deviation and not knowing the population standard deviation. If you would like to do the hypothesis testing for standard deviation, you need to use the chi-square method and this is not built into your calculator, you may have to download a program from the TI site to be able to do that. <music>